Hello and welcome back. I'm going to show you about drawing images to the screen and I'm also going to uh, show a few add-ons to our framework that would be fairly helpful. Helpful. So uh, the first thing I want to do is change the width and height of the canvas. In fact, add a width and height of the canvas. So I'll do a width of equal to 500 and a height equal to 500. Uh, that was just bugging me right now. So now we'll go back to our main.js and we'll draw an image. So I'm going to say var img is equal to new image. This is a built-in um, class for JavaScript. I'm going to say img.src, which is the source. And you can use this URL. is http colon slash slash www.ferrisarts.com forward slash brent.jpg. So that'll get the JPEG of uh, a drawing my of my avatar I've done I, I did a long time ago. So now we get the image and now we have to draw it. So let's go at the end of our draw function and let's uh, draw the image. So we can uh, easily do that by uh, doing ctx dot draw image. So we do ctx dot uh, draw image. We pass in our image img. Then we'll pass in an x, a y. Let's make it like 100 and 100, and then a width and a height. And this image I happen to know is 180 width and height. Uh, so I'll just use that. So now if we switch back over to our browser we have a uh, the image drawing here. Um, I could set this to a vector 2 and bring in our things to be fancy, but I'll be simple right now. So there you go. So there is an advanced function to this uh, as well. So uh, the advanced functionality is that we can add cropping. And this is going to be extremely important for our animations because our animations are going to be off a of sprite sheet. So if you haven't seen a sprite sheet before, look one up on the internet. It's just a sequence of images of a character that you crop and iterate through quickly to uh, simulate animation. So to do that, uh, it gets a little bit weird, this draw image function. It took me a little while to get this in order originally. So it takes in four more numbers. The, uh, you can, the confusing part is that the X and Y I just told you, this X and this Y completely changes whenever you add cropping. So I'll show you what I mean. If I leave this at 100 and I go over here to crop, and I want to crop from 0 to 0, you'd think that that starts from the top left and ends at 180 to 180. You think that that would mean it starts at the top left and, and crops the whole image, like from top to bottom. If I just did like 150, it would cut off a little bit of the bottom corner. You would think. So if I refresh that, oh, you have no idea what just happened. It just like grew and flew over there. And that is because this X and Y now do not become a position on the screen. They actually become the starting crop position. So if I put this at zero, the crop position will start at zero and end at 150 over here. And now these two numbers are the position. It flips like that, I know. So if I put this at 150 and this at 150 and save it, refreshed, there we go. Um, you can't really tell it's cropped too much. Let me put like a hundred or something in here. Ah, right, it inverts. So it stays at a hundred. This is the, it actually, yes, it flip-flops. Um, the crop becomes the beginning and the uh, draw and the position becomes the end. It's so confusing. I just never can remember, but I bet you I'll remember after this. So this becomes the width and height now. So if I leave this at 180 and return to this uh, starting, instead of saying 180, I say uh, 125. There we go. Now we crop to 125. And not only do we crop to 125, we scale it up 
to 180 because this is more or less the scale. It's the width and height. So uh, you, if we're cropping 125, the proper size would be 125 here as well. And there you go. So if I were to not crop it and say 180, 180, 180, 180, and uh, refreshed it, you can see now it's not cropped anymore. So again, to iterate, when you're not doing cropping, if you don't have these last four numbers, the first one is the x, the second is the y, the third is the width, and the fourth is the height. Notice we can use a rectangle for that. Now if you are cropping, it flip-flops. The, the uh, first number is the crop start x, the second is the crop start y, the third is the crop end x, the fourth is the crop end y and then it becomes the x position, the y position, the width, and the height. So remember that it flip-flops whenever you uh, go into um, crop. So uh, now that we've done that, I'm sure that that's pretty much all there is to drawing. So now I want to go over a few functions that are super important. Uh, well, not super important. You can still make games without them. But I really like them because it really brings some of the core elements of a lot of uh, other frameworks and languages that I like into JavaScript. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, show you, we're, we'll shoot back to the framework.js and we're going to add those to the very beginning before the vector too. So what we're going to be doing is prototyping core elements of JavaScript. So we can prototype things by typing in the class, then prototype, and then the function name we want to make. So uh, in this example, or we are, it's not really an example because this is part of the core framework, we're going to type in array. So we are modifying the array class. So we type prototype, and it'll turn blue if you're using Notepad++. And then we want to call, I want to call this one remove is equal to function arg and that's just the argument that we're going to be passing into it. So inside of uh, these prototypes we're allowed to grab um, this object by saying this as the keyword. So if I, I what I'm doing in this one is I'm removing the first instance of the argument that I pass. So uh, for example, if I have an array of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, let's say that's my array, and I call this remove function, uh, let's just, this is not how you make an array, by the way, but let's just say I say x dot remove, and I'll remove three. It's gonna, we need to iterate through the array and remove the first instance of three. So we'll do that by starting to do a for loop for and i, oh sorry, var i is equal to zero, i is less than this dot length. Now remember I said you can say this and it grabs this object and this object is an array and we know that it has um, length as uh, one of its uh, uh, variables that we can grab. And let's just do an i plus plus. So now we can say if this i is equal to the argument then we can say this dot splice which is a built-in array function and we pass in um, the the uh, integer we're currently at which will be i and how much we want to splice which will be one and what splice will do will it will go, it will go to that position and remove in elements which will be one element and then it will join it back together to be one array once again so once we find it we can break and uh, we can break out of this for loop and we found it and we got rid of it so that's how we can uh, prototype our um, our basic classes that are built into uh, JavaScript and we can also prototype our own functions if needed uh, in the same exact way so this video is getting to be a little bit long, so in the next video I will continue with our prototypes, uh, our extra functions, and then in the video after that I will jump into animations. So thanks for watching.